Hello everyone, Kosak just here and uh, welcome everyone on the recap of the round number four where I face the Indian Fide Master Adarsh Tripathi. We actually have played against each other two weeks ago on Menorca Chess Open uh, where we made a quick draw uh, because of the fact that my opponent was uh, a little bit better prepared uh, than me. I I went into his preparation, I didn't achieve any advantage, and the game ended in a draw. Uh, today, of course, uh, I had a fighting mood, 3 out of 3, so uh, of course there is Steve job to be done. But uh, yeah, I am fighting. Uh, he started with the move e4, I played the move c6, uh, I remember the result from the second round, I trust this Karakan, uh, so I decided to repeat it. Knight c3, d5 and knight f3, so a two knight variation. Uh, in general, I play the move d takes e4, knight e4 and knight f6. This is the main line in my repertoire. Uh, but today I opted for bishop g4, which is probably this is even the more common move than d takes e4. The idea is to exchange the bishop and build this nice pawn pyramid Without this bishop on c8, uh, the pawn structure is really good. E takes d5. It, this move surprised me a little bit because there's no need, there's totally no need uh, to exchange this uh, central pawn for my wing pawn, c takes d5. Uh, but he plays really quickly, so I suppose that he prepared something. d4, knight c6, bishop b5, bishop d6. So normal development castle and uh, knight e7. Uh, he took the knight on c6, so again, another uh, strange decision. At least it looked uh, for me as a strange, sorry, as a strange decision, uh, because I am not threatening anything. Well, maybe a6 is the threat, but after a6, now he can take. He wins a tempo if he makes me to play a6. He captured on the c6, and I recaptured with the knight, uh, which should be okay. Uh, but bc6 might be also interesting to change a little bit the pawn structure to have the c5 uh, move in the in the air. So it uh, it might be okay. It's uh, probably it is it is also very good. Uh, but knight six for me looked just uh, more clean. Let's say. Uh, I am attacking the pawn, I am not destroying my pawn structure, and uh, I am trying to play something like a card mode structure. Uh, knight d2, short castle, c3, rook c8, bishop f4, and knight a5. So a typical move, I want to transfer my knight to c4, uh, from uh, this square he will attack the pawn on b2, in an ideal position, the knight on d6, if this knight would be kicked off somewhere, uh, it would be a really good position uh for him he plays knight c1 really quickly knight c4 and knight d3 so uh this knight is uh, uh really well placed it protects the b2 pawn it uh, controls the center and in some point if i want to do a, a minority attack for example he plays b5 at some point he can put the knight on c5 uh and i would have a great problem with kicking him off uh this was the crucial position because i know that i made all the logical moves uh, but I have to continue my game. Mm, well, something like bishop takes a four, queen of four, queen b6 was my uh, first intention. Uh, but I didn't like that, that he just plays uh, rook a b1. He protects the pawn. And I can't really attack any of his... Well, he doesn't have weaknesses at all. So, hmm. He is just solid. He can play rook e1, rook e2, uh, allow this rook to go to the e file. Uh, this knight on d3 is really annoying, so uh, I didn't really like this endgame. Uh, it took me some time to calculate everything, but I played him with queen f6, but let's have a look. One hour, one minute, 39 minutes. So 22 minutes I spent by playing him with queen f6. Of course, it was the crucial decision, because uh, I changed the pawn structure. We will see. Uh, we will see soon how. And uh, yeah, if I change the uh, the dynamic of the pawn structure, uh, 
I have to be really, really careful and I have to be concrete uh, because if I am not, I might get into some problems. Uh, I think queen f6 is pretty okay. He played the move b3. Let's have a look. He's hour 22 minutes. I am 39 minutes. So his advantage is almost 50 minutes in classical game. It should be forbidden. It should be forbidden to play like this. Um, but I did. Time, manage time management, definitely to improve. Bishop takes f4, b takes c4. This is all first variation. And bishop d2, because my uh, bishop was attacked. Bishop d2. Uh, now I am threatening to exchange queens and also taking the pawn on c3. So queen takes f6, gf6, ed5, cd5, ed5. And I know that I gained the c3 pawn. But you can see that this pawn structure is actually really, really bad, really weak. Uh, rook ab1, the move I expected, b6. So uh, protecting the pawn. Uh, I could go for bishop c3, but I didn't like rook b7, bishop d4, and the move rook d1 with some knight f4 in the air. The knight is attacking the pawn, the rook is attacking the pawn, and this knight can even go on a h5, for example, if I go there, knight f4, to h5, or to d5, just to attack the f6 pawn. Uh, so b6 for me looked solid, but he plays rook fd, rook fd1, bishop takes c3, and knight f4. Uh, and I saw this variation. I decided to go for active rook c4. Okay, you want to get my central pawn? I will get yours. Knight takes d5, bishop d4. And you know, I am pawn up, so it should be pretty okay. But this bishop, well, it stays in the center, but... It doesn't have much space. My pawns are limiting uh, his possibilities. Uh, rook b3 plays really quickly. And <coughs> there is a trick. Uh, this knight uh, this knight doesn't allow to develop my rook. If I play rook e8, he can at least go rook d3. Or if he... Yeah, he can go rook d4 because rook e1. Yeah, so... Uh, rook e1, sorry. So uh, rook bd3. And I need to go somewhere with the bishop and f4. He can just attacking my bishop, keep attacking my bishop. Uh, I need to protect the f6 pawn. I didn't really like it uh, going uh, with the rook for the fork. Uh, of course, if I develop the rook on to c8, knight d7. Uh, rook d8 was, at first glance, it was my first intention. But he has the move knight d3, really annoying, with the idea rook d3. Rook c6 might be tricky because if he plays rook d3, rook d3 right now, rook d6, and I am saving because knight f5, bishop f2. So I am winning. And if he goes king f1 to run out of checks, now I have bishop c5 and I solve the problem with this pin. But the thing is that he can change the move order and now play king f1. And the difference, the very big difference is 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 if i play rook d6 right now he don't have to play rook d3 he doesn't have to play rook d3 but first go knight f5 and after rook d5 knight d7 we have a fork rook d7 rook d3 i'm i can't uh, go out of the pin so uh, i played the move king h8 to get out of checks uh rook d3 bishop e5 i am keeping this pawn knight d3 uh rook c8 so um, I don't want to allow him to go for d8 uh, because if I go rook a4 to be greedy to go for a pawn, he plays rook d8. If I protect the rook, knight f5, and I don't have a way to pro uh, to to defend from that mate. Uh, it's really annoying. It would be a, a nice picture I will show to you. Rook f8, king f8, and uh, rook d8, checkmate. So whoa. Guys, what have I done? Sorry, sorry. Uh, rook a4, rook d8. If I take the rook, he takes the rook. King g7, knight f5, king g6. Uh, if I, if he plays g4, I have king g5 and I escape on f4. Uh, but knight d7 might be annoying, to be honest. And uh, rook g8 next. Probably my king is in the mating net. King h6, rook g8. And knight f5 and uh, g4 in the air. Uh, so I played rook c8 to protect from the from the d8, and I understood that you know I am pawn up. I risk so much. 
I am 50 minutes down on the clock, and I understood that a draw would be actually not a bad result because after rook d8, now I am on time to play rook c8 and defend the rooks. Uh, but he was ambitious, of course. He has the all, uh, he has the pure right to to play this position. Uh, rook d7, bishop b8. I am playing passive but defending everything. And let's have a look. He he has he's pawned down, but he has a great compensation. Super active rook. Knight is much better than the, oh, the ugly looking bishop. Uh, but okay, I am pawn up. I protect the pawn f7 and want to develop the rook. Knight f5, king g6, knight d7, king g7. As I have told you, the draw is okay. King g2, rook e8, knight c6. Uh, whoa, what is the. Why is it inaccuracy? Why is it inaccuracy? Like. Maybe I clicked something? I don't know, because uh, it wasn't done by me. Ah, okay. <laughs> Knight c6. Knight c6 and rook c8. If he takes on a7, or if he takes on b8, we go to the equal, pawn, uh, equal rook endgame, uh, where I am happy because uh, I managed to survive. But he played knight d8. He played knight d8, and uh, it was an active way to play, but... Uh, it was kind of risky uh, because after I expected knight d8 and I uh, went for king f8 move. Uh, knight f7, king e8, rook b7, and bishop c7. And this, it might look like this rook is in some sort of a cage. Uh, but of course, other Stripati, we know his nationality, he's Indian player, and because of the fact he's Indian player, he knows everything and he calculates everything. Knight h6, of course. Uh, if if it was me who had this rook, I would lose it. But Indian guys, never. Knight f5, king d7, and knight d4. And uh, I can't go king c6 because this uh, square is protected. And after rook a8, there is a move knight b5. Uh, it was a really a crucial move because there is a move number 40 right now. So a crucial decision because you can see I have 5 minutes. I have 5 minutes on the clock. It's something wrong. It's definitely something wrong. Uh, I have to uh, take some decision. I can go for something like rook a8 because king c8 is under threat. Knight b5, king c6, knight c7. But in my opinion, with the king on a8, uh, this opponent game should be lost um, because he can put the king on d5 from which he can go to this wing or to this wing and create a passer on the king side. So with the king on a8, I think the position is lost. Uh, I could go for king d6 there, and uh, I was trying to calculate this endgame, but again, I am not sure. Uh, of course, I can do a passer uh, on the king's on the queen side, uh, but th such pawn endgames are they're so hard to calculate that uh, I don't know. I don't know the evaluation of this. For me, it was uh, I'm risking too much because I don't see a way. Uh, I don't see a way I can win it. And he has an easy plan to chop my pawns and to create a passer. I don't really want to allow for it. So I played the move rook b8, exchanging the rook. Uh, if he keeps the rook on the seventh rank, I play the move b5. So I don't allow him to go for b5. And my, and my plan is to go for something like king d6 or, and uh, bishop b6. And somehow I uh, I fray my pieces to a, uh, to a better uh, uh, to a better squares. Uh, but instead he took the rook on b8, bishop b8, and king f3. Hour 44 minutes, guys. It's amazing. He's over 100 minutes on the clock. And he's not playing bad. That's the case. He's not playing bad. King d6. In the end games, we have to activate our king. And king e4, king c5, f4. This is a... Uh, to be honest... I thought that I am suffering a little bit, uh, but I I knew that uh, so I need to create my own chances because if I stay passive, I will just get crushed. So b5, trying to uh, create some passer. Uh, I can't take on f4, realize, because knight e6 check. Or even knight b3, but knight e6 uh, with the fork. Uh, looks really clean. So b5, h4, and a4. So kind of some something uh, like a pawn race if he plays the move a3 which um, which could be calculated uh, i think i have i am not sure but i was calculating bishop f4 
knight e6, king c4, knight f4, and the move b4. And probably if uh, the things turn good, I might be even winning this. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, no, uh, maybe not winning, uh, but definitely I can, I can try something. I can try something there. Uh, so he, of course, don't uh, doesn't need to uh, move this pawn. Play the move g5, fg5, and hg5. I thought he would go for fg5 to play h5 and g6 to uh, to have this pawn a little bit more far away from this bishop. But um, at first I wanted to play b4, but after h5, b3 takes. Uh, a B3. Sorry, I'm moving on touchpad, so I'm not that quick. King D6. I thought that if I go King, sorry, King E7, and put my King on G8, uh, it is of course a draw. Uh, but he has this like a study move Knight D4, and this is over because uh, I can't move the King on E7 because of the fork. I can't move the Bishop because of the fork on B5. Uh, so I think like because of the study study like move, he is winning. Uh, also, the thing that after G6, A G6 h6 i calculated king e7 h7 bishop e5 knight c5 and king f7 king g7 king h7 i lose the bishop but i win a pawn so uh, so it's a draw uh, so probably um, after h5 move i have uh, sorry i don't have to go b4 but instead i can just um, well i was thinking of bishop g3 of bishop g3 and then h5, bishop h4. So I want to put the bishop on f6. After g6, I, I have an easy draw. Even if he's careless, uh, I can even try to win this. Uh, because I stopped, the, I stopped the g7 square. Uh, and after knight f, uh, bishop h4 and after uh, knight f3, I am not sure, but maybe... No, what am I talking about? Am I insane or not? King d3. I am insane. Or maybe... Oh, I don't know. I don't know, chess is hard. Maybe king d5 is actually a draw. Knight d7, king d5. <laughs> yeah, it might be a draw. King c4, b3, takes, takes, and king f5. <laughs> maybe it's a draw. So somehow, somehow I would save it, but a g5 uh, helped me helped me a lot because I played the move b4, f5, and uh, king d6 just to have the king closer to these pawns. Um, yeah, because the f6 or yeah, the g6 is the threat. The g6 is the threat. So uh, after king d6. Uh, if he now plays g6, which happened in the game, fg6, fg6, uh, he offered me a draw because of the variation that I can play queen, king e7, king f6, king g6, the threat. So even I can lose the bishop, but uh, after the move b3, which makes him to exchange, uh, I win the pawn and uh, we made a uh, we make a draw. Uh, f6 was my... Mm, I thought that if he is ambitious, he would play f6 because uh, f7 and knight c6 is a threat. Uh, but I have this king d7 move, and I believe this is really a uh, really important thing to uh, to know. Like I don't have any other move, so uh, if he plays, b if I play b3, uh, take take knight b3. Uh, there is no need to allow for uh, such an endgame. Maybe even this is a draw, uh, but it's unpleasant thing to to defend. So I don't see a need. King d7 just to uh, make on him some decision. If king f5, the bishop a7, I attack the knight. And if the knight goes, I, I go b3. And after the move king d5, I have bishop f4 attacking the pawn. Knight f3, bishop g5, knight g5, b3. And uh, takes, takes, knight h7, b2, f7, queen, queen. And after taking the knight on h7, I just made, make a draw. So uh, king d7 is most probably accurate move after which I am drawing, so I am happy, but it didn't really matter because a g6, a g6, fg6, he offered me a draw, which I accepted. Uh, well, if we look with the game with the engine, I will show it to you. Uh, the, the game might look pretty clean, but to be honest, I, uh, 
I didn't really feel uh, during the game that uh, that everything was that clean. At some point, I was uh, suffering. At least I felt that I am suffering. Yeah, B takes C six makes sense to change this direction of pawn structure. But Knight C six is okay. Knight E two, Castle C three, Rook C eight, Bishop F four, Knight A five, Knight C one, Knight C four, Knight D three, and Queen F six is the best move in the position. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Because I win this uh, this pawn on c4, right? Queen f6, gf6, cd5, ed5, rook ab1, and b6. Ah, yeah, uh, I didn't show it to you, but rook c3, knight c5, b6, and knight d7. And he's attacking this pawn and also attacking my rook. Uh, rook d8, knight f6, I well, knight h5, king g6. Um, maybe I should go for something like this. Why I haven't played it? Good question. Good question. I don't remember. Because if I knew that he will he will go for something like this. Ah, uh, Rook C3. What's after knight B4? Rook D8 and Rook D1. Bishop H6. Yes, and I'm defending everything. Yes. Something bothered me. Ah, uh, I know what bothered me. I just wanted to be with pawn up. In this uh, in this position, the material is equal. So maybe I am greedy, guys. I am greedy because this position, if he escapes on g3, well, I can go. I know. Yeah, rook a3, attacking the pawn, and rook b2, bishop c3. So I have chosen material instead of activity. I am greedy, guys. I am greedy. It's not because I'm Polish, but it's because. Sometimes I stopped thinking. Uh, bishop c3, knight f4, rook c4, knight d5, bishop d4. Yes, the position is equal. Rook c8, rook d7, rook c7. So the game is, as I see, still around the equal. Knight f5, king g6, knight d7, king g7, uh, blah, blah, blah. Knight d8, knight f7. King e8, rook b7, bishop c7, knight h6. Wow, so huh, why am I playing first line and during the game I don't feel like I am playing the first line? King c5, f4, uh, b5. And after, can I play a uh, after the move? Uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. After uh, the move a3, can I play bishop takes f4? Ah, it's a draw. <laughs> It's a draw because why is this a draw? Ah, knight d3. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> this is a draw, but after a3, king c4 wins. Wow, okay, good to know. Uh, but he plays g5, fg5, and after fg5, can I play bishop g3 like I was thinking? Ooh, no, I can't, but why? h5, bishop h4, knight f3, bishop g5, b4, king d3, b king d5, knight h7, king e5. Ah, king c4 is a draw. Aha, h6 and knight g5. Okay, doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Knight g5 and king g6, h... Oh, sorry, king g6, h7. Hmm. But I can go b4. Aha, so I can go for this, like h4, h5. And king d6, if he goes g6, and h6... Ah, we can transpose to this variation. Ah, good to know. We can transpose to this variation. I didn't realize it. So yeah, like taking the pawn of fg5 might cause some practical problems. But he played hg and king d6, the accurate move. Okay, and the game ended in a, in a draw. So yeah, guys. Um, uh, what conclusions I can make? First of all, time management. Time management uh, definitely to improve, because as you could see, in some moment I was even, uh, I had an even you know seventy minutes of disadvantage. I think in this moment, like before the time control, five minutes and he's he has. <laughs> Hour 16. Almost 70 minutes of disadvantage. 70. It's hour 10 minutes. 
So this is the one, but the main thing to improve. Yeah, good to know that. Good to know that. So definitely the time uh, time management and uh, don't be greedy because uh, I, I was greedy uh, to keep the pawn, but this pawn, uh, this pawn structure was so bad that I, I could even uh, sacrifice this pawn on f6 in order to get a normal structure and to gain some activity, uh, like in this variation after rook b1, uh, prob most probably uh, I should just take the pawn with the uh, with the rook. Of course, I am losing the pawn, but uh, my pieces are normally placed. I don't have to worry about uh, about, about my pieces, about the activity of them. Instead, I have chosen to be greedy, to keep that pawn, and to play passive chess. I have a pawn. Oh, stupid, stupid, stupid. But okay, we are humans. We are learning, and etc., etc. Guys, thank you very much. Um, three and a half out of four. So, not a bad result, of course. Uh, if uh, someone, if someone offered uh, me such a result before the tournament, uh, I would not even think and uh, and 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 take it. So, yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, I don't have I don't have anything more to say. Thank you for rooting me. Still keep fingers crossed and see you. Bye bye.